Hey, what is up everybody? This is Mark and today for the tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a jig to hold keychains just like this so they come out the exact same way every time. It's going to look like this and it's going to be really easy to make. You're going to love it. Let's do it. Okay, so let me walk you through what we're going to do and then I'll show you each step. So we're going to create a piece that looks like this. I'm using 8th inch MDF. It doesn't really matter what you use, but don't spend a lot of money on this piece because it's just holding things in place. So that's why I use 8th inch MDF. The size doesn't matter as long as it fits in the bed of your laser and, um, and then it can hold the item that you're wanting to make the jig for, okay? So in this case, we're going to, use a, we're going to make a jig for keychains like this. And they're just simply going to sit right in here with the key ring sticking up just like that. Now we could also make another row of them again here if we want to do twice as many. And that's fine. You can do it. Once you learn how to do this, it's super easy to make more of them. When we do this, we're going to start by putting this piece of material into the Glowforge. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you have a Glowforge or what kind of uh, laser that you have. It'll all work the same way. We're going to put it in there and then we're going to slide it against the front door and then against the left uh, shoulder of the crumb tray so that we can find that same place every single time. All right. So let me show you how to do that first. And then we're going to jump over to our vector program. I use Illustrator. You can use whatever you want. We're going to draw a bunch of rectangles and then we're going to cut it. And this is going to be perfect every time. So let me show you how to put it in the Glowforge first. Okay, so here we are at the Glowforge, and I've got my piece of MDF right here. And what I want you to do is I want you to put it in the bed, and then I want you to push it as far forward as you possibly can, all the way up against the door. And if it's a Glowforge, it's going to go right in that slot or that place where the pass-through slot would be, right up against the door. And then I want you to put it against this shoulder right here on the crumb tray. That way we can get it in this exact same place every single time. Now once you have it sitting there, we're going to jump over to Illustrator and I'll show you how to do the rest. Okay, there's one more thing we're going to do before we jump into Illustrator. We need to measure our keychains. So what I want you to do is measure the length of the entire thing, including the ring. And mine is about 4.6 by 1.19. Okay, 4.6 by 1.19. We're going to use that to make the space in the jig. All right, now we are ready to start making our jig in Illustrator. I want to point out one thing real quick. I always make all of my workspaces the exact size that fits the Glowforge bed, which is 10.98 by 19.2. You can do whatever you want, and if you have another laser, you can do whatever you want as well. I just wanted to point that out before we go any further. So I'm going to delete that. Now, first thing we're going to do is grab the rectangle uh, tool and we're going to make a shape that is not filled with black. <laughs> we're going to make a shape and we're going to make it the size that we measured earlier. So we're going to make it 1.19 inches wide and 4.6 inches tall. And that's going to be our slot that we're going to drop the keychain in. I'm going to bring it all the way down here to the bottom corner put it right there and then I'm just going to duplicate this a few times the spacing between them doesn't matter at all you can do whatever you want and I'm just going to make several just like this in fact now I'm going to just select all those copy and paste so I do it even faster and you know what I'll throw about three more over there and we'll call that done now you could definitely do a second row above if you wanted to that's totally great I'm going to select them all now and I'm going to use the align tool and align them on the bottom so that they're all perfectly aligned. Again, that technically doesn't matter because I'll show you why in just a minute. So once you have all of the rectangles laid out that you want, again, if you want, if you want another uh, row up here, you can definitely do one up here too. I'm not going to, but I wanted to show you that. So this is what we are going to cut when we load this into the Glowforge. And I'm going to jump ahead for just a minute. What we can do is let's say you're going to put names on these keychains for example what you're going to do is you're going to save this document and i highly recommend that you take these layers and you 
lock them so they do not accidentally move, okay? Because once you cut this, when you put the wood back in the Glowforge or back in your laser, it is going to be in exactly the same place every time as long as you don't move these things. Then you can open this document and you can use it over and over again. So if I want to put the, this on the keychain, I can just put it right here and I can line these up just like this and have it exactly where I want it every time. Now let me make a side note real quick. Remember that I measured the entire uh, keychain, including the ring. What I want to do now is I'm going to measure just the keychain itself, and it's 2.63. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second rectangle here that's 2.63, and don't worry about the color there, uh, 2.63 tall, 2.63 tall. Of course, I'll fix that again. And what that's going to be is I'm going to move it, zoom in here, I'm going to move this guy down right against the bottom, and then I'm just going to use a guideline, which is uh, Command R for rulers in Illustrator. I'm just going to bring this down like this, and now I can delete this uh, rectangle. And that lets me know that this is the length of my actual keychain, not including the ring. Okay. So I can put a name right there and right there and just center them up there and go all the way across. And it's going to be exactly where I want it. I'm going to delete those for now. And then I'm going to save this as my sample jig. And then we're going to load it and cut it. And we'll see how it works. Okay, stop the presses. Hold the phone. Just a second. I want to make sure you know this very important thing. When you cut the jig the first time, of course you're going to cut all of those rectangles. However, in the future, whenever you use that jig, you're going to have those rectangles in the file. But if you're on a Glowforge, ignore those in the software. Choose ignore. Or if you're in Lightburn, don't select them. Whatever you're using, do not cut those rectangles later because you will mess up all of your items. Okay? All right, so we can go forward. I just want to make sure you knew that. Let's keep going. All right, now we're ready to load our jig. So I'm just going to hit create and upload from file. Bring in my sample jig. And choose the materials, which is going to be medium draft board for me. I'm going to leave them exactly where they are. And let's cut this thing. So now loading the jig is just like you expect. You put it right back in the way that you did when you started. Put it all the way against the front door. Pull it against the shoulder over here or whatever static things you've decided to when you first started. And then you simply load your keychains in just like this. And make sure they're pushed all the way down to the bottom and you can load as many as you want. Close the lid there. And then when you open your Illustrator file, you simply put all the pieces in there that you want in terms of graphics, save it, load it, and then you're ready to cut or engrave. Just remember, do not move anything in your document. Okay, so now you're ready to use your jig that you made. Just remember a couple things right on the bottom where the bottom is, maybe some arrows to make sure you don't do it upside down. And then do not ever move anything in your Illustrator file, because if you do, it's not going to work. But that's how you make a jig, and that's how you make things work the same way every single time.
So now loading the jig is just like you expect. You put it right back in the way that you did when you started, put it all the way against the front door, pull it against the shoulder over here or whatever static things you've decided to when you first started. And then you simply load your keychains in just like this and make sure they're pushed all the way down to the bottom and you can load as many as you want. Close the lid there. And then when you open your Illustrator file, you simply put all the pieces in there that you want in terms of graphics, save it, load it, and then you're ready to cut or engrave. Just remember, do not move anything in your document.